This period of human history that we're going through right now, this is a period of upheaval. It's a period where the Earth is transitioning from one state to the next. The old power structures are falling and new ones are being put up in their place. This is something that, to put in spiritist terms, we're going from being a world of expiation to being a world of regeneration. And in order to do that, that means that the powers that have controlled this world for a very long time are going to have to be replaced. And not surprisingly, there are a lot of people that are not very happy about that situation. So we're definitely going through a time of chaos, a time of upheaval that is necessary in order to transfer the world from its old state of being an expiatory world to its new state of being a regenerative world. Now, a lot of religions have talked about this and they use different words about the uh, different ages of the world and the end of the world as predicted by various religions, which, by the way, is not the end of the world completely, but rather the end of the world as it is now. But anyway, with everything that's going on, with us being lied to by our governments, with us being lied to from the media, uh, there is a spiritual warfare that is underlying everything that's happening in the physical world. Everything that happens in the physical world has a spiritual cause, and there is a major spiritual conflict going on right now. So I decided to record this video. I put together a list of all the things that we can do to help in this spiritual warfare, which is going to reflect on the physical reality. When we get these things right spiritually, they will reflect in the world around us. And so I'm not going to bother to talk about politics. I'm not going to bother to talk about economics. I'm not going to bother to, to talk about the whole debate about whether this virus is actually dangerous or not. I'm going to go straight to the source of the problem, which is the spiritual. Because if we can get the spiritual sorted out, then all of the physical manifestations of that will sort themselves out as well. The first one, the most basic, is just to do what you know to be right. No matter what the circumstances are, uh, no matter what the consequences are, always do what you know to be right. And I wrote it on my whiteboard here just to remind myself how to be successful is to do what you know to be right all the time. And it might not work out in the moment, right? You might have to wait a little bit to see the effects of that. But if you want to be successful in every area of your life, then do what you know to be right because it will work out to your benefit in the end. Next thing is speak the truth. Speak the truth even when it's dangerous, even when there are consequences. We live in a world now uh, where the truth is being more and more suppressed, where opinions or facts that are against a mainstream narrative get censored. And in fact, at some time in your life, you may wind up living in a world where you are punished if you refuse to repeat the lies that are told to you. Again, my advice is the same. Speak the truth regardless of the consequences. And by the way, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have any moderation. You don't just go, go down the street screaming at people uh, what, what you'd believe to be the truth, right? You have to do it in a way that's effective, and you have to use a little bit of judgment to determine when and where is the right place to say your truth. Next is don't be afraid of ridicule or opposition. Next is, have faith that everything works out for those who do good. This is the fuel that's going to get you through, that's going to let you keep stepping forward, keep doing the right thing, keep speaking the truth, even if there are negative consequences to it, even if you face opposition, even if it's illegal in some cases, even if you get ridiculed for it. If you have that faith that for all the bad things that happen as a result of you doing the right thing, the good things that happen as a result of that are going to far outweigh the bad. In the final accounting, doing the right thing is going to make you far happier, far more successful than if you just acquiesced to the pressure put on you uh, and did the wrong thing. So if you have that faith, it will drive you. And maybe in a future video, I'll talk about how to gain that faith if you don't have it already. Next one is to love others, even your enemies, and pray for others even your enemies. Everybody in the world has potential. Everybody could be better than they are now. And if you show love to these people, if you pray for them, if you try to help them, then you help develop that goodness in them, makes them better people, and makes the world better for everybody. Next is develop yourself to be someone others want to emulate. If you are miserable and angry and arguing with people all the time, well, chances are people are going to look at you and they're going to think, 
I don't really want to be like that person. And by the way, I'm, I'm talking to myself here because I've had this problem for a long time and I'm, I'm getting over it, I'm getting better uh, because I recognize this, that this is a major point of development for me. That if you want to be, if you want people to follow your example, if you want people to listen to your words, then you should be somebody who is worth listening to. And that requires a lot of self-development. Next is to have patience with people who are still asleep. These people, as Jesus said, they know not what they do. So have patience with them, even if they act nasty towards you. I mean, I've gotten a few emails lately, like this morning I got an email from a guy saying that everything that I say is BS. And uh, yesterday I got an email from a guy saying, you are an effing moron. Um, you know, for no reason, right? Completely unprovoked. And I could get mad at these people, I could try to argue with those, these people, but it, it would be for nothing. These people literally do not know what they do. I talked about this in a previous video. So I, instead of getting mad at these people, it, it works a lot better for me and for the world around me if I recognize that these people are unhappy, uh, they're in a bad situation in their lives, and really, I should have pity and compassion on these people because they have no idea what they're saying and they're harming themselves a lot more than they're harming me. Next is know that death is not the end. If you recognize that death is not the end, then all of a sudden, the fear is lifted from your life because, well, you don't have to worry about death and you don't really have to worry about anything that happens in this life because this life is just a tiny little experience within the entire spiritual life. Next is be humble enough to admit when you're wrong. Probably me and all of us watching have at least something that, that we believe that just isn't true. And if we separate ourselves from that and don't make it part of our identity and admit that I'm not the most wise, knowing person in the world, and probably some of the things that I believe are wrong, well then, I can get to being right a lot faster than if I just cling to my every belief because I, I identify with it and I have that pride. Next is be humble enough to do good even if you don't get recognition. This is something I struggle with sometimes because I, I kind of think about an action and I think, okay, well, what's in it for me? And if you can, can break yourself from that, then first of all, what's in it for you is going to blow your mind. The benefit that you're going to get from doing good without even thinking about how it's going to benefit you is going to be enormous. And secondly, you're going to do good a lot better because you're not always going to be blocked by that having to calculate all of the rewards that you're going to get from it. Next is recognize that difficulty and trials are opportunities to get stronger. Next is have the courage to recognize that so-called official institutions aren't always good. The official mainstream media, the official government, the official uh, world governing organizations do not exist for your benefit. They say that they want to take care of people, but oftentimes it's a lie. And that's a very difficult pill for a lot of people to swallow. A lot of people are unwilling, do not have the courage to face the uncertainty that comes with recognizing that the people who are in charge, in charge in this worldly space, do not have their best interests in mind. They are doing things for their own agendas. They have their own interests. So if you try to convince one of these people um, that the, the media is lying to them or that the government is serving their own interests or that you know, God forbid the United Nations or some group like that is not working for the interests of the people. Some people absolutely refuse to accept that no matter how many facts and figures and proof you put in front of them because they just do not have the courage to face that reality of the world. And by the way, this is another, another way that, that religion is so important because if you don't believe in God, then the government or the news corporation or the United Nations or whatever um, earthly entity is the most powerful entity in your world. And to accept that the most powerful entity in the universe, in your worldview, is evil or is working against you is a very, very difficult thing to accept. So for those of us that believe in God, 
um, it's, it's not so difficult for us to accept because, uh, as a wise cucumber once said, God is bigger than the boogeyman. In other words, whatever evil institution there is in the world, or whatever institution of power there is in the world, let's say, God is always bigger. God is always in charge of that institution, so we don't really have to worry about that institution because they don't really have any of their own power at all. All of the power that they have is temporary, and they only have it for as long as God allows. Next is rest, meditate, enjoy life, understand the value of balance. Look, it's real easy when you get involved in a, in a conflict to always be driving, always be fighting, always be pushing forward. But the fact of the matter is neither the body nor the soul can do that indefinitely. You have to rest, you have to meditate, you have to regenerate in between those battles. And if you deny yourself the opportunity to do that, then you're not going to work at full capacity. And probably eventually you're going to burn out. So take some time to enjoy life and to stop and rest sometimes. Next is to learn to be quiet and access your intuition. Do you realize that you have access to the infinite wisdom of God? All you have to do is ask. Literally, if you ask God for the answer to a question, quiet your mind, stop thinking for a little while, stop trusting your own understanding, wait for the answer to come to you. In my experience, every single time I've ever done this, the answer has come to me. So be willing to be quiet for a little while and trust your intuition because it comes from a higher source and it's a source that you should trust. Next is value your time. It is your gift to the world. Now, if you're stuck at home and you're sitting on the couch, like melting into the sofa, watching Netflix for 12 hours at a time, you are not valuing your time. You're wasting your time. Your life, this corporeal life that you are given is made up of time and you have something to be doing with that time. And if you are wasting your time, then you are wasting your life. And I'm actually very happy that all the sports are off right now because I know a few people that literally waste all of their time watching other people throw a ball around. Like that's their whole life. They work as much as they have to to pay their bills and the rest of their time they're watching spectator sports. And thankfully that's not available right now. So maybe they can actually take a look at their life and do something useful with it. If you are wasting your time, you're wasting your life. I guarantee you are going to be depressed. You are going to be miserable. And in the final accounting, if you waste all of your time, it's basically equivalent to committing suicide. You are throwing away your life and not using it as it was intended to be used. So don't waste your life. There's no problem with enjoying yourself every once in a while. In fact, if you're going to make the best use of your time, as I said before, you should enjoy yourself sometimes. But if you're wasting your life on things that are not productive, you are going to be held accountable to that. And probably if you do that, you've already noticed that your own conscience is making you accountable. And that's why you're depressed and miserable. Next is don't waste your effort on people who are unwilling to listen. They will have their time. The Bible says, cast not your pearls before swine. Don't show your pearls, don't show your valuable things to pigs. It's a nice graphic way to illustrate it, but the point is that you don't want to say something of a higher nature to a person of a lower nature who is not going to be able to accept it, who is not going to be able to understand it. Like I said about people who do not have the courage to recognize that the institutions that govern the world are not... Uh, acting in the interest of the people, if those people do not have the courage, then they're just not going to appreciate what you have to say, no matter how well you argue it. So do not waste your time in those people. Try it first, and if the person is unwilling to even consider it, then don't waste your time and instead talk to somebody who is willing. And the person who is unwilling to consider, they have to get a certain moral evolution, which they will along their life, along their experience. They'll start to wake up. They'll start to realize. And then at that point, then perhaps you can try again. And maybe at that time they'll listen. Next is to look for the best in others. Even the most evil or asleep people have a spark of goodness buried in there somewhere. 
All of us human beings are made in the image of God and we all have that spark of divinity no matter how deeply it's buried. And if you can find that in other people, even the most seemingly evil people, then you can help develop that and you can help encourage that. You can help bring that out of them. It reminds me of, this is a silly analogy, but it reminds me of Star Wars where... Um, Luke is talking to, to Darth Vader and he's, he says, I know there's still some good in you. Whoever the Darth Vader is in your life, there is still some good in that person. And if you can encourage that, if you can develop that, if you can identify it and, and bring it out in them, then gradually it will start to overcome all of the evil and they will start becoming a good person. And the more good people there are in the world, the more of a good world we will have. And then the last one is to focus on the spiritual first. Once that's in order, everything else takes care of itself. Once you get the spiritual right, then the financial, the economic, the political, the religious, the philosophical, everything falls into place of its own accord. Once you get the spiritual right, everything else follows. The spiritual is the cause, the physical is the effect. So get the spiritual right in your own life and encourage it in the lives of others, and then everything will work together for good. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it. Please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. And also, I got a little free gift for you as a thank you for supporting me and watching my videos on YouTube. It's a free cheat sheet called The 8 Daily Habits for Success, Happiness, and Spiritual Fulfillment. You can get in the link below. Again, it's free. Thank you, and here's another cool video that you just might want to check out.